hi there in this video I will show you how to put together the steampunk gears box which is an SVG file from simply crafty SVGs so here are all the pieces for the box um, these are interesting so I wanted the gears to look a little bit more distressed so let's make sure I don't get the glare of the lights um, I cut this out in kind of a gold color and I use alcohol ink so when it layers um, it'll look similar to what I want it to look like which is more of a distressed gear look so these are the pieces here are the little panels for the top and the rest of the gears are in here um, as well as the front latch so I don't lose them and here's the panel so just to give you all the the layout of all the pieces uh, that goes to the top this is the top and the sides and then we have the outside of the box pieces all these and the inside so what we're going to start with first is to layer the gears so I'll show you I have an example here and also in the PDF file there's um, instructions or it tells you the way it layers but if you get it all laid out, um, you'll it becomes easier. And it's really large to small, but it's the smaller ones that get kind of a bit confusing. So I'm going to put that to the side. So here's an example. Um, let's go ahead and pull these down here. This is not it. So some of the gears are for this. So this is the latch piece. Um, the pieces that go with the latch are this, the two round ones, and this little one gear that looks like that. And then another round one and a little teeny. So those are the, the little latch ones. So I'm going to put those to the right. So be careful, make sure you don't put them too far to the edge of your table so you don't lose them. That happens to me occasionally. So the rest of what I have in here are brads and, um, and the gears. So I'm going to use one brad for this, but we're going to put that aside. I'm actually going to put the, uh, the latch back in so I don't lose it. So the way that I did that, there's a hole all the way through. So you could actually put that all the way through, or you can pop it up a little bit. So I popped it up with a little foam tape, um, that part. So the way it's going to go, that goes right there, is this big piece first. And I inked it knowing that only certain areas would be seen. So you can see that next this would go over it. So I'm going to make sure I'm centered here. And next one will, and the way that I have this line up um, with the gears right there, with the teeth so it lines up right there and then this will be the next piece that goes on and lines up the hole so, so this on this one you'll see this one goes on there this one so just look for the matching parts so you could always put this on first and over it um, it's just a look and then this one goes right here so they fit in place to make it easy for you and then you can put it on however you like and rotate it uh, depending on what you use. Um, so I'll go ahead and put this together and I'm not going to talk through it. Um, what I'll end up doing is, like I said, you could do a pop-up right there if you want to get more dimension or you can use a brad or something like a brad or you can put an enamel dot or so let me just show you this is the smaller one I intended it for a little bit larger but I like the color of this brad I'm trying to keep it uh, in the color scheme so once I glue it all together I could do that and I can even keep it because this brad is kind of small I can even have them rotate so that's what I think that's what I'm going to do and keep it loose. But let me go ahead and piece together these and then um, 
I'll keep a couple, I'll keep this loose and maybe this part, this part right here. So, but otherwise you could glue them on top of each other. So it's up to you what you want to do. So now that we have them all glued together, um, I have the option of um, just gluing this on and then putting the brad in between, um, like that in the middle. I know that I'm trying not to get the shine of the um, metallic paper. If you do put a brad in the middle of this, which you can kind of see, um, you want to make sure this is glued on the back in place so it doesn't show on the other side. So it might take a little bit to dry. So this one I'll just go ahead and place this through, but it's meant for a little bit larger um, brad. But I decided this was a good color. Um, I had a better I, this I had a better color than the small one, and it still works. So this way I didn't glue it, so I can rotate that top part. I mean, not that it really makes any difference, but if you like the way it looks or or you can just glue it down. So if you want to glue it down, that's up to you too. And you can just glue that middle piece. So that's done. Let's go ahead and start on the box pieces. So this has an inside and outside. So um, the the off white is the inside. So we're going to put together both in a way, and then we'll put it. We'll put these together separately, the inside box and the outside box, and then we put them together. So they all come together at one point. So we're going to go move that out of the way so it's not trying to zoom in here. So here we have the, just bumped my camera a little bit there. I just found these uh, fun digital papers and um, we're going to use that. I just want to make sure it has some words and stuff on it. So I want to make sure that it's, it's all upright at the same thing. And then this is the, the top. Oh, so before we go go any further, um, you could always put it up. This is the top too, like that. Um, but you could put it's gonna. This is gonna go underneath that, like that. So we're not gonna do that right this moment. We'll put it on uh, close to last. We don't want to put this bulky item on while we're trying to put it together. So I just put all those three over there. So for this, we have show the pieces. So there's four of these, all the same size. Um, there's there's two sets here. There's a top and a bottom. So there's an outside box, top and bottom, and inside box, top and bottom. So these are the outside box, top and bottom. So these two, two of these go with this, and two of them go with this. So and then this is the back panel 
to create our hinge. So we'll bend like that, bend back like that. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll do the top first. So let's go ahead, these go with this and this. Oh, and then I have those two, which are the panels for the side here. So we're gonna need those. So I found a little um, kettle bug. I had a kettle bug embossing folder that has uh, gears. So we're using those. So at this point you want two of these. You want these, but uh, we don't want, I'll explain that you only want five of them to put on this particular thing. We'll put the sixth one. So we're gonna take one of these and put it aside. Okay, well, that's for the back hinge piece. So when you fold this, this is you're gonna have this, and you're gonna fold it just like you see. So there's two pieces identical. When you fold this, you can just kind of fold gently up like that. Just make sure you get a good crease. Let's go ahead and put these on. We're gonna center on these little panels. I am using art glitter glue, and I primarily used um, American Craft textured cardstock on this. And I do like pre-folding, especially on dark colors. So I know you can kind of see here, but the reason I like to do that is because um, it helps me center it. So we're just gonna go ahead and center all these. And we're only gonna do five of them. So I'll just go left to right and just skip the last one and we'll put that on later. So make sure you don't accidentally put the sixth one on. So now you can see we have five of these on. Not put enough glue on that one, but that's okay. So we have five panels. So again, make sure you don't have six on. We're gonna go ahead and glue these together. So you're gonna add glue to that side tab and then you're gonna line this edge up, this left edge, right up to the fold, the score but don't go over it. Make sure it's centered up on top and bottom. Then because it's a hexagon, you can easily flip it over and go on the other side. So you can see now we're gonna add glue to that tab. And we can do it flat. And you can just fold it over and line it up again. So it should fall into place. You just make sure it's lined up top and bottom. So this is gonna start formulating the, the lid piece. So this box can be used basically, I'm just folding these tabs in, for really any time I, without the gears. So I have a Christmas box in mind and I'm going to make it in Christmas theme because it would make a cute Christmas box. You don't want to make a ton of these. They do, do take some time, but a special, just a special uh, type of gift. So we're gonna go ahead and add glue to these tabs. So I folded them in. So you could do one tab or you can do all of them. So let's just say your glue dries fast because you know some people use Scotch Quick Dry. You kind of have to know your glue. If I were using Scotch Quick, Quick Dry, I probably couldn't do them all at once, but I'm only gonna do three so I can show you. You can do them all at once, but um, so I can show you if you only wanna do a couple at a time. So I've, I'm gonna put this as the inside, so it's gonna make the, the lid, the top of the lid. So we're just gonna slide this into that first tab that has glue on it, and I'm, I have textured paper, so I'm going to put the non-textured side down because it's easier to glue 
it'll glue better non-textured to non-textured. And I'm just going to line this up with that little edge inside there. Then go around, make sure I'm pushing this edge into the tab fold, inside tab fold there, and then right there. So if I did all six of them, I could just go around. But you kind of want to start at one tab and then go. And I put just a little bit too much glue. And you can push in from the side too as you do that. Because it's so large, this is the reason why I had two panels this way, because it just makes it easier. Um, if it were smaller, smaller hexagon, we could just glue it right to the top. This way it, it uh, makes it easier. You're just using a little bit more paper. I think it's worth it. So I just flip those tabs up and I'm going to add glue to them making sure I get to the edges and then I'm going to flip them down and continue going around. So I want to start where I ended so I'm going to start right on this edge just place my fingers in there so depending on your glue you just need to make sure you wait long enough before you go to the next step after this so now they're all set right there. So at this point you could, it doesn't matter when you add this panel really, it's just a matter of whether you'll get glue on it, but you can go ahead and add it now. But you see that inside panel really does help. If I made the box smaller, it's kind of a catch-22 with this kind of box because it's not the easiest box to make because of the inside part. So if you go any smaller, it becomes more difficult to make. And my glue is kind of backing up a little bit here. So let me get a little pin. had that handy because I have a little backup. When you do panels like this you want to get close to the edge. Of course I just went over the edge without going over the edge. I have a little uh, damp paper cloth towel to uh, pick up any kind of excess. I'm going to go like this. Once you get it in place, so I'm just lining it up. You can flip it on upside down and then apply pressure that way. So if you do like our projects, I always appreciate a little like, a thumbs up. And if you um, want to subscribe, if you click that little notification bell to the right, it'll let you know when we have new projects um, and or tutorials. And make sure if you're using something like our glitter glue, a little bit goes a long way. So there's the, you'll see it's without that, so that's going to be the, the back part of it to hinge it backwards. We can put the flat portions here. Actually, we're not going to put that one because I'll, I'll show you why. Now, I didn't uh, emboss this because I just didn't think uh, it would really enhance it. So, that's the same color as the little side panels. We just want to center it. So it should be equal distance on all sides. So I didn't get too much glue towards the edges, so um, I had a little wiggle wiggle room to be able to. This is the nice part about wet glue is that it gives you a little room to move around. 
if you notice things on my fingers, it was a rough go that I've done. They, they kind of, I've been messing around with ink and it, and the paper and the ink kind of messed around with my cuticles big time. So, and then I have a couple stains. So the bottom piece will be put together identical to this. Um, the only difference is it's just taller. So when we put the bottom section together, we're going to go ahead and make sure you uh, put that aside. This So we'll need one of these panels for this. So I'll just put it with this. And then one of the panels go. So those two panels go with that. So if you do that, then you won't get confused. So the same thing, we're going to make sure they're all folded. Then it has two um, bottoms. The other one, you know, of course, the lid was the top. And then um, we'll go ahead and make sure you probably pre-score it for these to get it ready. And then here's, this is how I left these not scored so I can kind of show you. Go like that. You kind of apply pressure so you can get to that edge and fold in. So I'll go ahead and we'll add these panels, just centering all these. And then we will, um, and there'll only be five of them, so from left to right, and then we'll put this together. So I'll let you go ahead and watch most of the process. We'll skip through the panels, um, and then you can see, just so you can see again how it's done. So one thing I want to show you, or explain really quick before we put this together, is that um, when you're putting these on, make sure that if you have pattern paper that is um, has to be a certain way so um, I had a, this kind of like here's the, the paper actually the top it's not it's not just a random pattern something that could be pictures of um, something that at the top of the paper is noticeable if you have it upside down so just make sure that when you cut that out the reason I'm saying that is because I have a uh, paper I'm going to use and it's got cars on it so if it were upside down now it looked funny so I, I put these five on and then this one of course will be on the back of this once we hinge them together so that's so we'll put that aside and we'll go ahead and we'll put this together just like we did the the top So now we have the bottom, which is this similar, it's just the opposite of the top. So we're going to put the inside part in so they'll, they'll go together and eventually it'll be like this. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna, we're going to do the top part first because um, I think once you see how the inside goes in, so we're going to do the inside of the top first and then we will um, place it inside here. So let's, I'll just put that up here 
and I have the pieces, these two pieces, plus you'll need one of these. So one, this, there'll be one each for the top and bottom. So this, so set. So you'll notice that this is basically fits in there, basically. It's a little bit off, but there's a reason for that. So when you um, cut the paper, of course, I pre-folded it, but um, so here's the tip. If you want the, we don't want to see the tabs on the inside. It's having, having a hard time uh, focusing here. Um, we don't want to see the tabs on the inside. So the way it cut was like this. So when I folded it, um, I folded it naturally like this. So if you wanted the texture side to make it easier for you, you could actually fold it, you could put it upside down and cut it upside down. But what I did was a bunch of valley folds. So I, so if you wanted, you don't care about having, you have double-sided colors and you don't care about um, having textured card in the inside, then you wouldn't have to worry about that. But you might like that nicer look and feel. So basically, if you want it, if you cut it like this, you're going to have to valley fold it like this. And then these will fold in like the bottom of or the top of the lid. And then these fold naturally down because um, those will be folded. They, they're going to flare out. So this is how it will go. So make sure you make all the folds accordingly. So this is the outside of it. So we're not going to see that because it's going to be inside the box. So what we want to do is I'm going to, this is the inside. We want to glue this to the outside of the box. So we did it last time on the inside. So remember, this is the inside of the box. It's just easier to flip it over and do it this way. I'm going to line this up. And light it up. There's obviously no tabs because this is just the inside. It's just a thick wall box. So we want this on the outside like that. So it's not as simple as, I mean, I guess it is. We can just do this and go like that. I'm not, I'm not used to doing like the opposite. So you want to add glue to this. I like this little top, but it gets in your way. Some it kind of flips around sometimes if you don't get your finger on it. And then we're going to flip it over flat and line it up. So you can't see obviously where the line is. So just get it flat and make sure it's lined up top and bottom. And you could pick it up like this and check if you wanted. So I was a little bit over the line. So these all fold inside. So you can see the tabs are on the outside. So this is again the view, the view of the inside of the box. I'm gonna flip these in. And these were a I had to really because I um, cut it with the texture side up. It's a a valley fold and you know, I really need to get the crease in it. All because I want texture on the inside. Okay, so now we can go ahead, so that's the top. So we're going to, um, we're not going to see this, so all we're going to do is put it on the inside like that. And I'm, I'm going to put the texture side down. So um, it adheres better because now I'm actually uh, gluing to textured tabs. Before, uh, when you have a box that's texture side out, the tabs that we glue onto are not textured, at least for American Crafts cardstock. It's only textured on one side. It's slightly textured on the other side, but it's not that much. 
So I'm going to do them all at once. I'm just going to slide it in just like we did the other ones. And just go around. I'm very right handed so I try to do it so you can see it in the camera but um, I have to really pay attention sometimes. So the next uh, step we have, we're going to actually attach this to the outside box. So we're going to do it all at once because it's the same exact steps for the other one. So these all have to fold inside. Oh, fold outside, I'm sorry. Okay. But you might want to just fold them up. But make sure there's a good crease before you do that. So we're going to get the outside of the box. We're going to go ahead and just slide it in. So what you want to make sure is these are kind of up like this. And um, I would say that these are very handy in this process. Um, I was going to not, not have this gap here, and but I found that you can get these in because we'll, we can't get in to add pressure but these can get into that little spot. So if you have some some uh, thin, it doesn't have to be these long ones, but you'll see. So be careful too, if you ever get something like this, you can really hurt yourself. <laughs> oh boy. So flip these up. So I want these to kind of catch. So I'm gonna just slide this in. So now you have these, these are gonna flare out. But what you wanna do is lift up and just add glue to this outside part of this uh, off-white inside flap. So we'll do one to start with. So what we're going to do is line up this edge into the the tab fold, I mean in the fold, this the fold of this uh, off-white. So we want to make sure it's centered. Then we're just going to fold it over. So. When I'm doing this, I'm kind of pushing in from the side because I can keep that edge there without pushing the tab down. And then this is where these can come in handy. You could go in here and uh, hold it if you wanted to. I found most of it I don't have to use anything like this. But if you want to, you can just kind of go like this. But if you feel like that's not enough, you could use this as well. Okay, so this so hopefully I'm making sense. So I'm going to do I'm going to talk you through another one. So we're going to go ahead add glue to this in, outside of the inside tab. I'm making sure that this edge of the outside tab lines up to the inner fold right there. I'm going to fold it over and I'm kind of pulling it at the same time because I want to keep it in place. I'm making sure I don't get glue on the outside too and then applying pressure. So if you can see my fingertips in here, if you get good enough coverage you could use the tweezers if you want but you may not have to. So we're going to continue doing that all the way around. And I went slow intentionally. But if you get a good enough coverage of glue, and don't push it down, just make sure you can kind of fold right over that edge. And then I'm pulling, I'm actually using my fingers to apply pressure against that edge to keep it in place as I rub the top part. So we'll go ahead and, and finish this off and make sure that you don't leave before it's done. And again, you can go ahead and use something skinny like this. If you have something even smaller, like a really skinny dowel, you could try to get in there without trying to rip that area. But I left that open intentionally to allow some a tool if you needed to. If you had a really long paper pie piecing uh, tool, I mean like a piercer. Of course you don't want to pierce yourself, but 
um, you could use something like that. I'm trying to think of other tools, but we have a, a slew of tools in our arsenal, so it just has to be really skinny. But I find this works quite well, as long as you don't push down too hard on the top while you um, are rubbing and you're kind of pulling in. And I have that little skinny panel that we'll put on top. So it pretty much if for some reason you have like a little bit of gap inside, I have, a, it's that, that border inside the, I mean the border fits on the edge, but it's, it goes a little bit into the box just in case you have some, if it kind of pulls out on one of the tabs. Trying to be forgiving a little bit. So you want a light touch. I mean, normally I would forward through something like this, but because it's if it's something you don't do all the time, and it's not something that I've done a lot of these, um, I have to pay close attention because my uh, instinct is to push down and. Of course, if I push down, I'll, it's not going to help me too much. And this one's having a little bit of a, had shifted a little bit for me. These are sharp. My sister gave them to me. So now we have this piece. Just make sure the textured side's up if you're using textured paper. And we're going to just line it up to the outside edges. So we'll go ahead and uh, add glue. Make sure you get co good coverage here. So you'll want to do this all at once. But when I say good coverage, I have these gaps. And you don't want to see I mean, we, this is the only place it'll connect right there, so we're going to have that opening. And make sure you get glue all the way up here. So the fine tip applicator like this helps. If you want to know the one I'm using, I have a link, an Amazon link. Um, if you want to check it out, there's all sorts of them like that. So it's up to you what you want to use, but it gives you an idea. And this is specifically for my art glitter glue because it's a thin glue it is a little bit of a challenge to get it in um, the bottle sometimes but it works fairly well so now we're going to go ahead and just line this up so I'm just going to get one side in, in place I'm just making sure by rubbing my finger around the edge here. I'm going to now just kind of go a little faster before the glue dries to attach it to all the other edges. I have enough glue right here. And of course, I just put a little bit too much, a lot too much. So you just want to get it lined up on the outside and then it'll hide those tabs. So once you get it in place, we'll flip it over and we can apply pressure that way. If you want to hold it, just make sure your fingers are clear of glue because uh, it this is a visible part of the box. Just kind of rubbing it gently, not just applying pressure. I'm just going to go up and check it. So that's the lid. So we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Um, I mean, there's really no difference. The only thing is it's bigger, but it's the same exact process. So I'm not going to go through, talk you through it. You can, I'm just going to show you. You can just watch the videos I make it. And uh, then we'll move on to the last part, which we'll be putting on 
like the the pieces on the top the hinge the hinge first and then the latch so we'll we'll go ahead let's go ahead and put the bottom box together And I just want to show you this different method. So I glue to one edge and then I'm going to glue the opposite side. So I use the tweezers here and then sometimes what I do just to get it uh, centered is to do the opposite tag like a uh, tab like that and then the same method but then it puts it in place so the other tabs will fall into place a little bit better. Now we're just putting this uh, edge piece on. Same way, just kind of running my thumb on the outside edge, trying to keep glue off of it too, so I have that damp paper towel that I can wipe my fingertips on. But you've got to do this fairly quickly. So your glue doesn't dry, but you could always reach in a little bit. I'm also rubbing the excess glue off. So this one bulged just a little bit out, but you can barely even t tell. Um, I actually put the tab on the inside, so that's what it looks like if you put it on the inside. It's barely noticeable. So now we have the top and bottom. So that sits like this. And then we'll put a hinge on it to open up like that. So we'll go ahead after we have this done, just make sure this is good and dry. We're going to take this piece and then we're going to glue it on the back so I'm just making sure that it... So when you put this top these top pieces on it does create a little bit more um, thickness. 
So when I put this panel on, it could be, I've added a little bit of allowance, but it could be just a little bit, this piece may not fit exactly where it needs to because of the excess space. It's going to be like this. So because of the fold, so this might not go all the way to the top. So it just depends on how much um, it lifts for you. And it turns out that's lifting more in that piece anywhere else and anywhere else for me. So it may not be perfect. I've give, given the extra space on the back for that back panel. Um, but it just may be a little bit out of alignment on the back. I accounted for the average space that it would be when you put these two together, but not everything's perfect. It's paper. So what we can do is go ahead and add glue to this back piece. There's a way I can fake this, but I don't want it to look, I want it to look a certain way. So my little way, so you don't have to see this little issue. Uh, doesn't work as well. So what I would do is uh, line this down. Maybe don't go all the way to the bottom. So you have a little bit more clearance on the top. Or you can line it up. So it, it still will work. So no worries about that. So this is folded back like that. So now I'm going to put that on its back. So remember you can't really push really hard because it's hollow in there. And we're going to take the side without a panel and it's going to glue right there. So I want to show you before I glue it. So you want to push down, you're going to want to get it as close as possible but you can see it's almost to the top but not quite. So we're going to go ahead and be careful because we don't want, see I, I was already m messing with this, I don't want it to fold. So do your best, I would just, let me turn that around so you could actually see it. So I'm going to add glue to this tab, I'm going to do it because I'm right handed, I'm just going to do it right here. And I'll turn it around and show you. So you want to make sure that first part is really glued down well before you do the second part really get good coverage on both of them. So I have a little glue on my fingertips. So we're going to line this up. So I'm just going to line this up carefully. And I'm pushing it in at the same time. I want to make sure it's lined up. It's not quite lined up. Let's go ahead and adjust it. So let's get it started there and then we will flip it on its back. So I'm just applying pressure to it now that I have the panel where I want it to be. And you can just kind of rub them. You want to make sure it, you get enough glue coverage because you don't want it pulling apart when it opens. So this is one thing that uh, I noticed with this. It's a heavy lid. So I'm just taking my time to, to show you. So it opens like that. But you don't want it tearing. See how it folds? So that's why we want to train it to fold but it, it opens like that. So you don't want to do a whole lot of that. You don't want it tearing. So you could always put a, a another, I mean, you could uh, double uh, secure it, but it really, I have another one. It's really a gift box. So, um, I mean, you could make it, but I think I would secure it a little bit more if it were something I were going to use all the time. 
So now I have little Velcro dots for the closure. And we have this, these pieces. So we're going to go ahead and put together the latch. I need one more uh, brad. And then um, we'll be done with it after we put this on too. So let's go ahead and uh, do the latch piece and then we'll add this on. So if you can see we have this, I have two pieces together and I put a brad through. So we have that piece. So the shine of it. So that um, goes with the bigger circle. So there's a big circle and a small circle. And then this is the smaller gear with the smaller circle with the brad through it. So we'll put those on, I think, after. Let's go ahead and put the latch on. So here's the latch and it you, has a score in it. And you'll want to fold it kind of for a valley fold. Okay. And I guess this is Distress with Alcohol ink. If somebody's interested in what I did, I can share it in a video. Um, you can just comment here or send me uh, an email via a contact form. So we're going to attach it with this, these little Velcro dots. So let's find the, the back first so we know what the front is. So the back's right here. So the easiest way to do this is to put it on its back. So I don't want to do it upside down for you. So we can go ahead and uh, it's folded that way. So we're just going to glue this piece. I'm going to add glue to this. So you're going to eyeball the centering of this. So you're just going to center it. So I'm going to go to angle because um, don't do that. That's one reason I don't like putting things glue on panels because I drop things a lot. Okay, so I'm going sideways. But I'm trying to, to line this up close to the, uh, the edge of this top piece and also center at the same time. I think that's good enough. And just pe be aware this is probably not going to be the sturdiest uh, depending on the thickness. I didn't use the thickest. I think a good metallic craft, um, it's craft, I can't think it's called a Cricut craft paper, but I believe. Let me, let me check real quick while we're, I have it right here. So if you use a metallic, um, I would, it's called Cr Cricut Craft Board, it's thicker. So this is kind of thin to my liking, but I had the right look. Um, but that, it's got metallic craft board. So let's go ahead and this is how I like to do it. I'm going to put, this part is going to be on the box. I'm going to just line it up. This is a this is a cheap version of a Velcro dot, but so this part's gonna go. Why I say it's cheap is it's from the Dollar Tree or Dollar Ninety Nine. I'm gonna put it inward a little bit. It's really sticky, so I got it set right now, and now I'm just gonna fold it over. To place it. And the reason I, I did one at the tip and it's kind of flimsy so if you need to hold it at least it's, there's more bulk right there. So you could also uh, use a magnet or a, not a, not really attaching it or maybe a like I said a, I'm trying to think of what the word is. You know, removable glue dot but that's not good for a gift. So I'm sure there's lots of people that are have a lot of ideas out there beyond what I do so I'm gonna add these little gear elements so this circle is gonna just line up to the top there and because it's metallic paper it takes longer to dry so 
So you're going to want to give it time. So let me do the second one. And this just goes to the bottom. So the circular part lines up with the circular part on the bottom. If you want to get pressure behind it, this is like ultra sticky. It's a little bit more stickier than regular Velcro brand. So if you need to use something like a glue dot, that would work well too for this. So you want to make sure those dry, so we, that can dry while we're putting that top piece on. But you can see now it's lined up. And like I said, if you don't feel like it's, there's other uh, glues that you can use. Okay, so the last piece, let's just line this up right here. I'm letting it dry. This is just going to glue the back of this like that. So it'll, it's slightly, slightly smaller than the circular part of this. So because I have the drop seeds today, we're just going to add glue here. And then we can add it to the top. So I think this is a, I wanted to make something that was steampunkish to go along with uh, the steampunk uh, top hat that I made. So this is what I came up with. So you could add a little glue on these pieces. You don't have to put a whole lot. So just carefully line it up. Just start with one edge. Make sure it's in place. It might need to be scooched just a little bit. Let's see, is it handy that that rotates because now I can just. So I, what was nice about this project is I got to play with some media, mixed media that I haven't, I haven't done it really for a very long time and I haven't ever done this. This is just something I had to figure out the look. I had it just plain metallic and I just didn't like it. It wasn't the look I wanted. So I want a kind of a rusty feel, but it's hard to um, color metallics. But it was interesting. It was kind of fun to do. and So there it is. And we'll go ahead and add it to the top of the box. And I wanted to make a box that could be used for any occasion. So you could really theme this for anything if you got rid of the, the gears. So even the front. If you didn't use the gears but just use the circles for the latch, um, that would give you the same. It would be a, it would still work basically. So I'm just doing it so the pattern paper is a certain way. And I'm just centering it. I didn't think that would be as fun for me as it is, but I'm having fun with the moving gears. Although it would be more fun if it were just like moving other gears. Maybe one day I'll, I'll try that. So that's it. So there's the gearbox. Kind of uh, masculine looking, but fun. And you could do a lot more with it. So this is should be dry, but I don't have it closed so we can open it one more time. And there it is. So I hope you like this project and I thank you so much for watching.